It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding. Hey there, this is Eric Keller for Entomology Animated. In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at the mouth parts for two specific types of bees. So first we're going to start with the honeybee. This is the honeybee right here that you see on my screen. I'm rendering it in Redshift for Maya. It looks weird because there's no hair on it, so this is a, what a bald honeybee would look like, which is kind of strange. Here's the same model in ZBrush, which is where I did most of my work. So I'm still working on the mouth parts. They're not done. I'm just trying to refine them, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this series. Uh, here's just a menagerie of various insect heads I've done over the years. I love doing this to compare and contrast. Here's the orchid bee uh, with a really crazy long tongue. Here's the full orchid bee model that I'm working on. And the mouth part for this one is, is just been blocked in. It's still very rough. You can see it simplifies, just one big blob. But uh, I did want to render this in Maya. So this is the model rigged, and you can see some images that I've rendered in Maya. And there's the actual model. The green fuzz on there is the Yeti fur. So we'll be talking a little bit about using Yeti to add fur to these models. So let's start by taking a look at the honeybee mouthpart anatomy. So here is just the head of the honeybee with no fur and the mouthparts in color in ZBrush. Okay, so here's my model. I'm going to take a look at the anatomy and, and we're just going to start by naming these different parts. Uh, but before I do that, I want to take a quick look at my reference so you know where I'm getting this information. I'm not just making it up. Um, and these are all original models that I made from scratch as well. So this one was not made from scan data. It's made from looking at images and trying to interpret them. So here's some pictures that I took of a dead honeybee um, with macro lens. Uh, you can see, you know, at first it looks like, oh, this is pretty obvious, a bunch of little parts, right? But the closer you look at it, the harder it is to figure out exactly what's going on, right? So that's one source of, of uh, reference, but it's useful in that you can get a better sense of the three-dimensional uh, shapes of these mouth parts especially when you're looking through like a microscope and stuff. But I don't always know what I'm looking at. Uh, I've created an illustration here to help guide me when I'm modeling in ZBrush. So just a quick sketch in Photoshop, nothing to write home about. Here are some reference images from the famous Snodgrass book on honeybee anatomy, which you can find this online. It's a very old book, but extremely useful. Uh, you can see it gets quite detailed, but you know, as I point out, it's like the further you get into these different parts, the harder it is to kind of decipher exactly what's going on. But that's kind of the fun part of the challenge. We're seeing various different views with some useful explanations down here. I know that I've got some things wrong. I know that for a fact. Uh, that's just part of the risk of actually doing something. You're going to make mistakes, but, you know, mistakes are how you learn. So hopefully I'm getting somewhat close. Uh, I like to get into more and more detail, as much detail as I possibly can. There's some other illustrations that I've found online that can be useful, but you can notice when you look at these illustrations and you start working based on these illustrations and the photographs and stuff you find online, you start to find that each illustrator has a slightly different way of representing something. So is this more accurate than the snodgrass? Not sure. You have to kind of keep looking and working at it. So there's the reference that I'm using. I'll also use images that I find online through Google searches. I'm not going to share those in these videos out of respect for the photographers who uh, took those pictures, but that's definitely a source that I also use in addition to what you see here. Say so finding a nice photograph of this part of the mouth is really, really hard. Not impossible, but very difficult. One of the things I like about honeybees is that it's the bee that we're most familiar with, and it's also the bee that has the most information out there since we've been working with honeybees you know, as livestock for uh, literally thousands of years. So there's more knowledge on that than, say, the uh, orchid bee. With the orchid bee, there might be like, I don't know, 20 people in the world that really understand how the mouth parts of uh, orchid bees work. Got to start somewhere, so honeybee is a good place to start. So let's take a look at what these pieces are. Alrighty, so let's get some honeybee mouthpart terminology down and take a look at where the model is now. These parts are going to still need further refinement. I'm still learning, so they're a work in progress, but we're taking a look at right now. I'm going to turn on transparency so we can focus on these different parts. And let's take a look at the mandibles. So these are the mandibles. Bees use their mandibles for chewing and cutting, also shaping the wax cells of uh, the honeycomb that you find in the hive, among other things. Uh, then we have the glossa, which is the tongue. This is the long tongue. It sticks into the flower to get the nectar, and you can see it's kind of folded around in this tube, 
and here in the middle is what I'm calling the rod and I've gotten that terminology from some of these older books where they refer to it as a rod but I don't know if that term is still being used uh, you can kind of see the gloss of it see how it curls around here and then it has calls this the rod we have the mentum which is a structure that supports the glossa and these the uh, cool thing about the honeybee and we'll talk about this in a further video is that you don't see these mouth parts all the time the honeybee is flying around because they fold into like a z pattern so i'll talk about that in an upcoming video but I, right now i have everything extended with the maxillary palps the palps are kind of like you know finger-like structures that it uses to manipulate various things as it's using its mouth i'm not 100 percent sure this is exactly correct because i've seen them represented a couple different ways but you can see here in this illustration in snodgrass it's just kind of a little nubbity thing and I've seen that nubbity thing also in some of my, you know, photographs. It's a little bit hard to see here. Uh, but that's a maxillary palp. So insects, mouth palps are a common feature of, of insect mouth parts, but they're used a lot of different ways. Think of like a grasshopper or like a katydid. They usually have these finger-like or even um, a mantis. They have these finger-like uh, palps that come out. Actually, you don't have to think about it because I have it right here. Hold on a second. Yeah, so if you take a look at our mantis here, you can see that the palps on the mantis seem a bit more complex than they do in the honeybee. That's common among a lot of insects to have that part. Again, they're like fingers. Okay, then we have the labial palp, which I have more confidence that these are correct. So these are again like uh, finger-like structures with joints or jointed appendages. I can turn off the poly paint so you can see them a little bit better. Here's the galea. The galea is interesting because these actually kind of curl around the glossa. So they're these large flexible plate-like structures and you can see here they are in my photographs. All right, now this poor bee is dead, of course, so it probably has no control over the shape. Well, hopefully it has no control over the shape unless it's a zombie, a zombie. Okay, enough of the puns. But here we go, we can see kind of the curl galea around the, the uh, the palps right here. We have the stipes, which I think my stipes in this model are a bit overly simplified because I haven't found good enough reference on them. It's a little bit confusing in the photographs, but that's what I have blocked in. So this part is a little bit confusing to me, but I believe the maxilla is the structure that includes the galea. So if we look at snodgrass right here, we can see uh, a labeling of the maxilla. Here's the galea, basically the bottom part of this structure right here. And here are the stipes, and it's kind of is suggesting that the galea is basically a part of the maxilla and possibly so are the stipes as well. So that's something I'm still learning about. If you know the answer, let me know. But it looks like the maxilla is made up of the stipes, the galea, and the maxillary palps. So they're the parts that are on either side of the glossa and these structures in the center right here. We have the palpiger, which kind of uh, it curls around the glossa. Let's turn this on for a second so you can see a little bit better. We have the rod, which I mentioned earlier, which goes down the center of the glossa. I'm gonna have to do more research on that and make sure I have that right. And then we have some of these structures in the interior of the mouth. And you can imagine, these are the hardest to find reference for, but they support the mouth structure. And then the bee is able to fold its mouth into a Z-like structure. And these, these aid in that kind of folding, I believe. So I'll talk about that in a future video. But you can see the reference I have here is pretty simple. And then we have the lorem, which is another one of these structures. You can see right here, it kind of forms a W. And then finally we have the Lacinia, which I'm not exactly sure what these do. So that's something I'm going to be diving into a little bit more. And again, these are kind of simplified because it's hard to find good reference on them. And sometimes they're shown in illustrations, sometimes not. And they definitely kind of look like little blobbies in the photographs. So, but that gives us a starting place for our honeybee mouth part anatomy. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about how these parts fold into the mouth. And I'll talk about this rig that I have in Maya that allows me to manipulate these parts and then fold them back into the head. All right. Okay. So that's coming up in the next video. All right. Thanks for watching. You know what to do next. Like, subscribe, share, check out some websites. Check out entomologyanimated.com. Lots of uh, animations covering various aspects of insect physiology. 
as well as some tutorials on how I use ZBrush and Maya to make various insect critters and arachnids. Also, check out the Noman Workshop. I have created uh, several very in-depth videos that cover uh, from beginning to end how I modeled uh, this orchid mantis as well as uh, jumping spiders and wasps and other good things. So check out the Noman Workshop and I'll see you next time. Thanks.